Sexual assault is one of the most stigmatized topics in our society. Increasing awareness through conversation would reduce the stigma and lower rates of sexual assault. Though it can happen to both men and women, a large majority of assault survivors are women. It's not a new phenomenon, but it's a new topic of discussion, I think makes people uncomfortable. When I was 11, I went to Disney World with my family. For this particular trip, my mom's work friend came along with us and she had a son who was four years older than me, I think. I hadn't seen my six second cousins in over a year. Everyone rushed to greet me. They asked me what grade I would enter in the fall, second grade, duh. How my parents were doing and how I fared flying alone to England for the first time. On the fifth day, we just stayed at the hotel and we went to the pool. The kids decided to play a game. Even though James, John, and Charlotte were older teenagers, they still agreed to play hide and seek with Mason, Hannah, and I. My parents were on the side, and this boy's mom was also on the side. I tiptoed to a bedroom closet, squeezing between a small dresser and a tall cardboard box. Suddenly, the doorknob turned, and I folded my arms over my head as I ducked into my knees. So I was swimming in the pool, and he asked to come show me something behind the waterfall. After a closer look, I realized John had entered. He closed the closet door behind him. I slowly uncovered my head and let out a sigh. I thought that he was gonna take me to go up and sit on the rock or to go on the water slide, but he didn't. He took me to the side where it was shaded and no one was there. My breath became lighter and my shoulders loosened. I turned towards him and he put a finger over my mouth. I thought he shushed me to prevent Mason from finding us. And he basically molested me. I'm not going to go into detail about what he did. His fingernails scratched my twiggy thighs as he pulled my light blue shorts down. He licked his fingers, puckering his lips. I knew what he was doing at the time, but I didn't stop it, and I didn't really know how to. In the United States, many women do not report their assault because it is a long, painful process for the survivor and a slim chance of punishment for the perpetrator. Even in abusive situations, women do not speak out because they are ashamed of their role in the relationship and worried about victim blaming. I was in an unfamiliar place when it happened. Um, I didn't really know even what I could do or where I could get help. It wasn't until fifth grade that I understood what happened in the closet during that game of hide and seek. I didn't think much of what had happened, so I never told my parents. So I did tell my parents. My mom at first was very confused. We didn't do anything about it legally because he was about to start college. I haven't talked to my dad about it yet. I was and still am um, concerned that it would make him feel like he had failed. I didn't feel comfortable risking that for him because something bad had happened to me. In ninth grade, my mom came home and said, my colleague is leaving our branch because her son is being accused of rape. We kind of felt like it was our fault for not doing anything or coming forward because then that girl wouldn't have been raped. He was charged with five years, I think. Many schools and colleges deny the problem of sexual assault on their campuses in order to protect their reputations. For real change to happen, institutions must be active in protecting their survivors and punishing their perpetrators. Especially a lot of the cases on college campuses that I've heard about, there's a lot of things that they say will happen if there's an assault case, but it, none of it actually does. My sophomore year, I heard some people talking about sexual harassment and it was really upsetting how it was spoken about. and noticing how prevalent it is. In seeing that, I like went to the handbook and I was like, okay, what do I actually have protecting me? Like I go to a private school, what is protecting me when the law isn't forced to? And it just says like, oh, if you're sexually harassed, confront your sexual harasser and if need be, consult an adult. So you're telling me to literally like put my life in danger if I'm harassed. And then like, maybe I'll need help. 
and I went to the head of school. And so I write out an entire new policy. I write a letter explaining why this is important and how the current policy promotes rape culture. And I get into the office and he goes, you're such a beautiful writer, but I don't think this policy promotes rape culture. And I was like, I'm 15 and I know it does. Don't look at me in the eyes and tell me that you face the same stigmas I do as a young woman. The only thing that's changed, they added half of my policy. So the half of it said, like, this is what harassment is and these are the forms of it. And it's pretty comprehensive. But in terms of confront your harasser, that's still there. Just having, you know, measures in place to hold the institution responsible um, and to hold them accountable for the help that they say that they'll give. I think even that would be a huge step in the right direction. I can walk in the halls and I see my harassers and there's been no consequences for them. Like I can point them out as I walk by in the hallways, so that's unsafe for me. So I asked for direct consequences and there aren't any. And I asked for protection and they gave me none. We must educate both girls and boys about sex and consent from an early age. Also, education should challenge the misconceptions of sexual assault so young people check their own behavior and know the real risks. I think it starts with kids. Because I think I had my first like sex ed class in like sixth grade. And I think just inserting a vein of teaching about consent and teaching about respect, in addition to just teaching kids about the the biology of sex, teaching them about the emotional parts and about trauma. I think in our society, a lot of the time, men are taught to treat women as objects, but maybe the biggest step would be trying to dismantle that and teaching a culture of respect would be a massive step in the right direction. The refusal to have open discussions about sex has led directly to the culture that normalized sexual assault. The prevalence of sexual assault in our society disproportionately hurts women and can have disastrous long-term effects. I also think decreasing the culture of victim blaming and making sure that, you know, every person who gets assaulted will never think that it was their fault and making sure that the people who are responsible for finding their assaulter and, you know, charging them and whatever aren't in the back of their mind thinking, okay, but what was she wearing? <laughs>